Okay. Hey, I'm Andrew Garza, founder of TwoGuysOneBit.com. Um, this is our first podcast, and hopefully first of many instructional podcasts to come. Um, the goal of these podcasts is to provide uh, knowledge, education to those who are interested in electronics, programming, and stuff along those lines. Um, it's kind of set up in a minute physics format, um, trying to keep it interesting, uh, try to leave out all the boring stuff, and try to just cut through to uh, keep your interest as much as I possibly can. Um, if you watch the whole video, uh, just let me know what you think of the formatting, um, what could be improved, if you like it or not even, and uh, even what you would like to see me show. Um, this first video we're going to show it kind of goes over uh, RGB LEDs and then how to program for them accordingly. It is uh, based off a RGB LED library that I wrote for the Arduino uh, a couple months ago. So it just kind of goes through and uh, the problem solving you kind of have to do with something like that. Um, but yeah, if you have any other ideas, please let me know. I'd love to show you guys uh, if I know how to do it, how to do it. So um, yeah, let the video start. In this video, we're going to take a look at common anode RGB LEDs, which just means one input for power and three separate grounds for red, green, and blue. We are able to model this as three separate LEDs, just so it's easy to understand. One red one, one green and blue. Now incorporating a common anode RGB LED with pulse width modulation, the circuit needs to be hooked up in this fashion. Something we're going to cover here very shortly is pulse width modulation pin is either hooked up to ground, or it's either hooked up to a plus 5 volts in the case of the Arduino. Now when it's connected to ground, the LED is going to be on, but when it's connected to the plus 5 volts, the light's going to be off. So in order for the LED to turn on, current has to flow in one direction from anode to cathode, which is what happens when the pulse width modulation pin equals ground. However, if pulse width modulation pin equals plus 5 volts, current tries to flow from cathode to anode, which makes the LED turn off. Now this is due to the physical properties of the LED. However, mathematically and with circuit analysis, we can show why when the pulse width modulation pin equals 5 volts, the LED will be off because current will be in the opposite direction flowing from cathode to anode. Getting into more depth about pulse width modulation, here's an example of a possible pulse width modulation output. For example purposes, I'm going to refer to lowercase t as one second. So we see for the first second, pulse width modulation equals 5 volts 100% of the time. For the next second, pulse width modulation equals plus 5 volts 75% of the time. And you see as time goes on, the pulse width of plus 5 volts is being changed or modulated. Keep in mind that the zero volts in these circuits equals ground. Going back to a schematic seen earlier in this video, if the pulse width modulation is constantly being flipped on and off 50% of the time, then the LED is going to appear 50% its original brightness. Another possible pulse width modulation example would be as if the plus 5 volts was decreasing in percentage with respect to time. This would make the LED appear to fade off to on. Remember, when pulse modulation equals 5 volts, LED is off. Now let's take a look at the RGB LED broken down into three separate LEDs, each with their own independent pulse width modulated pin. What this allows us to do is generate three separate pulse width modulated signals, changing the level of brightness of the red, the green, and the blue LEDs, allowing us to create any color in the RGB color scheme. However, the RGB color code is not represented as values of percentages as shown before. They are usually represented as values from 0 to 255. 0 meaning 0% or no color, and 255 meaning 100% or full color. This works well because the Arduino's pulse width modulation code, shown in the video, takes values in a range of 0 to 255. Digging deeper into the RGB color values, we can take the numbers 0 through 255 and actually convert them into an hexadecimal number. This is actually very useful when it comes to representing colors in RGB color code. We can take the red, the green, and the blue attributes and represent it as one hexadecimal value. If you do not understand base 10 to hexadecimal conversion, I recommend that you do a Google search on the topic. In terms of the Arduino, the prefix 0x is applied so that it knows that the following values are hexadecimal. Now taking the hexadecimal value and breaking it down into the red, green, and blue components of it, we can see what will happen when we apply those values to the pulse width modulated pins. From what we learned earlier, we should realize that blue should be completely off, green should be 50% bright, and red should be on. However, this isn't the case. 
It's not that the math or the schematic is wrong. It is just that we have to work around using the common anode RGB LED. It's called common anode because all the inputs are shared. However, all the grounds of the red, green, and blue are independent of one another. This is why the pulse with modulation pins are hooked up to those outputs. So notice the FF is supposed to be on, but the LED is showing that it's off. And 00 is supposed to be off, but the LED is showing that it's on. Now if we want this to be correct according to the hexadecimal color code, then something's got to change. The great part is that we don't have to change any of our circuit, and we just need to manipulate code that when it receives that hexadecimal input, it will convert it to the proper value for the RGB LED to display the correct color. Lastly, I'd like to state is that I believe that it is the programmer's job to display exactly what the user expects it to be. Now this may seem obvious, but I believe a few programmers kind of miss that mark. In this case, we're taking a certain input and is being changed to be something completely else. However, it is outputted as the user would expect. Well, thank you for actually uh, watching the entire video or fast forwarding to the end, either one you did. Um, but uh, yeah, just let me know what you thought of it. And, uh, you know, I realized I might have left out some. Um, it was kind of intentional because I was just kind of testing the water uh, in this first podcast. I didn't want to throw too much in there at once. Um, but yeah, let me know if you thought I added too much, didn't have enough. Um, and again, what you want to see, um, shoot us an email at twoguys1bit at gmail.com. Or you can even go to our website at twoguys1bit.com. Find a way to contact us through there. And please check out the blog. Um, I try to update it weekly. It may or may not happen depending if we're doing a project that week or not. So again, uh, thank you for watching the video and I hope you come back and watch more.